Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about the Stefania Erecta. Look at this gorgeous thing. If you don't know me already, my name is Emma and I make houseplanty content all over the internet. So if you want to follow along with my houseplant journey and maybe learn something along the way, check out the rest of the videos on my channel and give it a subscribe. And also stick around with this one because like, let's learn about this. It looks kind of like you've just put a potato on some soil. It's not a potato, it's a completely different thing, but it looks like a potato. But it's sprouted a long vine and these like insane gorgeous round leaves, which is absolutely gorgeous. I think they're super fun. They're kind of a little bit more of a challenge plant for someone who's had a little bit more experience growing plants. It's probably a good like moderate level. Like I wouldn't call it easy, but they're not like that, that difficult either. They're also not like any of the other plants in my collection. They are a deciduous plant, which means that they die off in autumn and winter. They go dormant. The bulb you can replant again in the spring and have it grow again, but it is not a like perennial plant. It will not stay around all year. So it's just a bit of fun that I get to have every year, planting it up again and seeing how like the new vine grows and how it sprouts and how it's different every time, which is super fun. So I thought it'd be good to start this video talking about the potting of this plant because you can buy them like potted and sprouted already from a store in like the spring and summertime, but it's more likely that you're going to be buying it as a potato like I did. This, this little potato like thing here, this is a Stefania erecta bulb <laughs> or just the codex. And if you just have the codex, you're going to need to pot it up. Also, this happens every year in the spring and summer when you want to give it a new life. So the first thing that you want to do when you are trying to plant this up again, either after dormancy or if it's your first time having one, you want to kind of wake it up through soaking it in lukewarm water. And you wanna soak it from like overnight to 24 hours. I personally wouldn't leave it any longer than 24 hours because you could risk the codex like rotting basically. You want to fill a pot that's a little bit bigger than the width of your codex. You can see mine, it's like maybe a centimeter bigger. I probably could have gone a centimeter even bigger in this pot, but I really like the look of how the codex is like almost being the only thing that you see in the pot. And then you fill that with your substrate of choice. You could use soil. And if you are, I will talk about that a little bit later in the soil section, what soil you wanna use. If you do wanna know exactly what soil to put it in right this second, skip to this time in the video and I'll be talking about soil. You can also put it in perlite and do a sort of semi-hydro thing. That's what I did last year when I was growing it for the first time. I just used perlite, like damp perlite, and it sat in a water reservoir. So it was like always getting some sort of water. But this year I decided to try soil as well to mix it up and both of them have worked with perfect success. So it just depends on what you want and what's easier for you. And it's, it's fun to experiment and try new things. And because this is a deciduous plant and it dies off every year, you can try new things a bit more regularly than you could with other plants. So that's it's just a bit of fun. You then wanna place the codex on top of your substrate. Also, it is important to note which side is the top. You want to put the side with the bumpy bit, this sort of nipple-ish thing. <laughs> I don't know how else to describe it. You wanna put that at the top because that's where the plant is gonna grow from. The rounded side is usually the bottom. So you wanna make sure that that side's down so the roots can go down and then fill in around the edges. Do not bury it. You don't wanna dig a hole and put it in and cover it with soil. That is not the goal. You want at least 50% of the codex sticking out of the top of your soil. I think mine is buried as deep as I possibly could bury it, but you can do anything from like 20% and it can still grow just as well. Then give it a thorough water and put it in a nice, warm, humid, bright place. Humidity is one of the big keys to getting these to sprout. They pretty much won't sprout unless they have high enough humidity. Then just be patient. It does take quite a long time for these things to sprout. I planted mine up 
on the 12th of March this year. And then exactly a month later, I started to see a little, little, little tiny bit of sprout. And then from there, it took another two months before it even sprouted these three leaves right here. So it takes a long time to get going. I find that this bit, the sprouting, and then to the first set of leaves takes the longest. Of course, if you put it in a brighter location or a warmer location, it will do better, but don't overheat it or over sun it as well. It's kind of a balance. Like I said earlier, the Stefania erecta is deciduous, meaning it will die off in the autumn and winter, or at least once a year. That's completely normal. You can just leave it in its pot. Just make sure to trim back the stem and leave it in a sort of warm, dry, low light place and avoid watering it too much. Maybe like once a month, you definitely don't want to over log it with water because that is the time when it can really get root rotty or codex rotty. So be very mindful of how much you're watering and don't fertilize it at all. Or <laughs> you can do what I do and just take it out of the pot completely. Make sure you let it dry out and then store it in somewhere warm and dry and dark. I think I just chucked it in a drawer or something and it was perfectly fine to pot up again the next year. So I think that is personally a little bit easier because if you're like me and you have a lot of plants, you don't have the most space year round. So having an extra pot that just kind of has a dirt and a potato in it isn't necessarily the most aesthetic nice thing to have around. So it's up to you, do as you wish but I personally like to take it out and let it sit in a drawer for like the other six months of the year. So light is super duper important for Stefania erectas. They love a good bit of bright light, ideally indirect, but they can tolerate some sort of early morning, late afternoon sun. Avoid midday and early afternoon sun because that can be really really hot and burn these like really delicate leaves because they are Quite thin and a little bit fragile. So Try to keep out of direct sun during those periods of time But a little bit in the morning or afternoon is fine. Ideally though, they're getting four to six hours of bright indirect light a day if they don't get that much you can see they get a little bit leggy mine personally is getting a little bit leggy it's not the most upright or compact thing they do grow a lot more compact if you if they're in a brighter spot mine lives in the ikea cabinet because of humidity and so i've kind of had to compromise on the light portion because of that humidity so it's kind of for me it's a balance and I picked humidity over light. The cabinet does have grow lights, but because it's summer and in general, my fly is getting quite a lot of light in the day, I don't put them on for that, that much in the summer. So I wouldn't say it's getting nearly enough light, but I might move it to a new location now that it's sprouted, obviously, and put it in a bit more of a brighter spot. Somewhere that might get a bit of late afternoon or early morning light, just to see if I can get it to pop out these leaves a little bit more compactly. Stefania erectas are quite sensitive to overwatering, so it's better to err on the side of caution when it comes to watering, and if you're unsure, maybe wait an extra day or two. This is also possible because the codex stores water itself in the bulb thing, so you can give it that little bit of extra wait time between waterings. I think right now I'm watering mine about once a week, and it's pretty hot outside. I might increase that a little bit more because we're going into a bit of a heat wave. So just beware and monitor, probably monitor about once a week. And if it's feeling dry, give it a water. If it's feeling wet, don't give it any more water. Also, you do wanna be careful when you're watering not to water the codex too much because that can help further rot and other issues. So if you possibly can avoid watering the bulb and just water the soil. I know it's a little bit difficult, especially if you've potted yours as tight as I have mine. I highly suggest getting something like this squirt bottle with a very fine tip. That will make it a lot easier to water a tightly packed pot like this. It does get a little bit damp around the edges, but just be careful and you should be okay. 
Sephonia erectus, I love the warmth. It's probably enjoying this day more than I am. I'm standing here sweating and it's probably like, yes, heat. But anything between 15 and 27 degrees Celsius or 60 to 80 Fahrenheit will be perfect for these guys. Anything lower than like 10 Celsius or 50 Fahrenheit, it could cause stress to the plant. So avoid lower temperatures if possible. Stephania erectus also love, love, love humidity. They love it to get them sprouting and they also love it once they are sprouted. They'll tolerate anywhere from 50 to 80% but their ideal is over 60% humidity. So if you can give them that, that would be awesome. To do so, you can put them in a room that gets quite high humidity, like your kitchen or your bathroom, as long as they're getting enough bright light, that should be perfectly fine. You could also group plants together, put it on a pellet tray or get a humidifier, or even put it in something like a terrarium if you have a large terrarium for something this big. I personally don't but mine lives in the Ikea cabinet, like I said, because it gets quite high humidity there, almost always over 60%, even up to like 80, sometimes even 90. And I did put it there specifically for the humidity, uh, but it doesn't get as much light. So it is a balance. Uh, like I said, I might try and switch that and see if it prefers the bright light, less humidity. I mean, even though my home is like at least 50% all of the time, so. We'll see, I'll test it out, and I will get back to you in a potential future video. Stephania erectus are quite prone to over-fertilization, so again, err on the side of caution when it comes to fertilizing. Probably only need to fertilize once a month in the growing season, so spring and summer, not at all in the autumn and winter if you've kept it in its pot, and obviously don't fertilize it if you've taken it out of its pot and it's sitting in a drawer, because that doesn't make any sense at all. But equally, it can live perfectly fine without it, so you don't need to fertilize it at all. If you do decide to, make sure you're using a houseplant or like cacti or succulent fertilizer. You don't want anything too intense. If you're in doubt, err on the side of caution. If you're using all-purpose, half-strength it and don't give it all that much because it really doesn't need it. I personally fertilize with liquid gold leaf about once a month. I'm not keeping track of it too intensely, but I'm just making sure to do it probably every other time I fertilize most of my other houseplants in my collection. Well-draining soil is super important when it comes to Stephania erectus. They need well-draining soil, as like I said, they are very prone to overwatering and root rot, codex rot. Ideally, use something like a cacti or succulent mix because that provides a lot of drainage. If you've not got anything like that, you could use normal houseplant mix and add some perlite and sand to give it that extra drainage. You also wanna make sure you're always potting in a pot that has drainage holes at the bottom because the water needs to escape somewhere. You definitely don't wanna let it sit in water. If you do decide to keep it in the pot over winter, you should probably change the soil and repot it every three years or so. But as I don't do that, you can just repot it every year as you need. If it lives in a drawer, that's all you need to do. So another reason why I prefer that method, I don't need to remember if I repotted it last year or the year before. It's just something that you don't really need to worry about too much. Though I think I might try and repot this one in a pot a tiny little bit bigger. I don't know, should I do that? Let me know down below in the comments if you've ever repotted a like mature Stefania recta, like with leaves. Is that a dumb thing? I don't know. <laughs> but you probably won't need to in the time that you're growing it over the single season of the year. Propagation of Stefania recta isn't really a thing. You can't divide the codex like you could with a caladium or oxalis bulb. It's not really possible. The only real way to propagate is through seeds, but I've never done it. I don't know much about it and I wouldn't suggest it. I think if you want more Stephania erecta plants, your best bet is to just buy more codexes. Also, you want to be aware that the Stephania erecta is toxic to pets like cats and dogs and also mildly toxic to humans. It can cause gastrointestinal issues 
vomiting, loss of appetite, nausea. So don't eat your plant, don't let your kids eat your plant, don't let your pets eat your plant, don't eat this plant. Although I call it a potato, it is not for consumption. Don't eat it, it's toxic. <laughs> So that is it. That is everything you'll need to know about your Stefania erecta plant. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a thumbs up down below and comment on any other houseplants you'd like me to talk about in the future and subscribe for more. Thank you so, so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.